Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. We have to understand what it is that we see in this life, what it is that we walk through in this life. And we have to look at our intention as to what it is we are looking to achieve in this life. We have to know the difference between insan and insan kamu. We have to know the difference between halal and haram, what is permissible and what is forbidden. We have to know the difference between good and evil. We have to know the difference between that which is transcendent and that which is mundane, that which is of the world and that which is beyond the world. We have to know the worlds that we live in, and we live in more than one world. First, <clears throat> we live in the world of this body, the elemental world, and we walk through the elements, and this body creates an act that it uses to get through the world. And as it walks through the world, it sees various scenes and it reacts to these scenes and it creates a life within these scenes. It tries to conquer these scenes. It tries to use everything that it sees and everything that it runs into to its benefit, to care for itself. This is what the body does. We also have a second part of ourselves, which is the mind and the intellect. And it gathers all the scenes that we've walked through. So imagine, Imagine you're 20 years old or 40 years old or 60 years old or 80 years old. We've done a lot of walking through this world. We've done a lot of watching in this world. All of the things that we've seen are collected in our mind and in our intellect. And these become our memories. And so we also live in a world of memories. People can close their eyes and recapture moments of the past, but they are just moments that are scenes. They are without any substance to them. They're not elemental, but they're of the elements. So these are elemental memories as opposed to direct elemental uh, as opposed to a direct elemental involvement. And these memories stay with us. The old memories that we like may bring us joy. The memories that we don't like may bring us sadness. Uh, but we have an enormous number of memories and they interact with us and we interact with them. And we very often do things because of our memories. We see someone that we have a memory of from a long time ago. And if the memory was pleasant, when we see them, it's a pleasant experience. If the past memory was not pleasant, it's an unpleasant experience. So we have the life that is our elemental life that interacts with the elements as we walk through the elements, all of the scenes of the world, and then these become our memories and they reside in our mind. 
The third world we live in is the world of dreams. This is when we begin to think about our memories, think about the scenes that we've walked through, and we create new scenarios based on that. Illusions based on what we've learned. Illusions based on love. Illusions based on hatred. Illusions based on wealth. Illusions based on fame. Illusions based on so many things. These become our dreams. So we walk through the world of the elements. Then we walk through the world of the memories. And then we walk through the world of dreams. None of these are real. All of them are illusion. All of them don't take us to truth. All of them don't take us to reality. The only way that we can find reality, that we can find truth, that we can find God, is to enter into the world of wisdom. The world of wisdom comes when we leave the world of the body, we leave the world of the memories, and we leave the world of dreams. When we rid ourselves of these three worlds, it's only when we rid ourselves of these worlds can we begin to enter into the world of wisdom. And it is only the world of wisdom that will take us to God. It is only the world of wisdom that will take us to truth. It, was, it is only the world of wisdom that will allow us to escape from the world of shadows, from this elemental world. The world of bodies, the world that interacts with the elements, all has shadows, but God has no shadow. Truth has no shadow. Your soul has no shadow. And as long as you are interacting with the world of shadows or the shadows of the shadows, which are your memories and your dreams. These are levels of shadows that you remember and that you act on. Only when you are rid of these can you begin to enter into the world of truth. There were two disciples of different masters. And one of them was bragging about all the things that his master could do. He said, my master can imagine something and you'll see the words in the air. He can also write on paper a hundred feet from him and you can see the words appear. This is the strength of my master. And then he said to the other one, what can your master do? And he said, well, my master eats when he's hungry and goes to sleep when he's tired. The point being that he wasn't involved in the miracles of the elemental world, and he wasn't interested in the elemental world. He only gave the elemental world the credence that the body required. And the body requires food and sleep. But other than that, he gave it no respect, and he gave it no importance. In order to understand the shadow world and the non-shadow world, we, of course, understand that Allah is without form. Allah is formless and is a light, a light that is beyond our imagination, beyond our mind's ability to conceive of things. However, within us, that 
there exists a ray of God that has been placed within us that is in fact our soul. And our soul has no shadow. Wisdom has no shadow. God has no shadow. And the qualities of God, mercy, compassion, love, kindness, none of these things have shadows. But everything in this elemental world has shadows. So we, each of us, have to begin to conceive and understand or try to understand the difference between a world of shadows and a world of no shadows. Light doesn't have a shadow. So somehow we have to try to begin to conceive of a world of light. And we have to concentrate on a world of light. Now, as we walk through this world, we walk among the scenes of the world. As we walk through our memories, we walk through the scenes of our memories. As we walk through our dreams, we walk through the scenes of our dreams. And all of these are connected to the physical world. All of these are connected to the elemental world. All of these are connected to the elements and to our attachment to the elements. Imagine if you can shift your focus. So instead of focusing on the elemental world, instead of focusing on the scenes of this world, you begin to concentrate on that which is without shadow. Imagine concentrating on Allah and during the day, walking with Allah as opposed to walking with the world. A dervish was walking through a bazaar and he heard someone screaming who was selling watermelons. The sweetest there is, the sweetest there is. He immediately thought the man was talking about God and fainted. This is the difference between walking among shadows and walking with God. We need to walk with God on a constant basis. We need to think of God on a constant basis. Our teacher told us that the first kalima, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, or that portion of it, which is la ilaha illallah, should be repeated by us constantly throughout the day. Constantly throughout the day. And people would ask him, well, how can you do this constantly without, throughout the day? Wouldn't it take effort that's beyond our uh, capability? And he said, it's like drawing water from a well. It takes a while to get it started. But after it gets started, it becomes automatic. And what, think about the portions of la ilaha illallah. I do not exist, only God exists. The body does not exist. The elemental world does not exist. The shadow world does not exist. That which we see in the scenes that we act in do not exist. All that exists is God. All that exists is that which is without shadow. All that exists is that light that is truth. All that exists is the world without shadows. All that exists is truly beyond the elemental. So as we walk through our life, as we 
take care of the things that need to be taken care of, what is the amount of elemental concern that we pile on ourselves? How much do we deal with miracles? How much do we deal with trying to manipulate form? How much do we deal with trying to manipulate power? All of these things are idols. How much do we deal with trying to manipulate wealth? How much time do we spend on arranging, rearranging, and then rearranging again the world around us? How many times a year do we repaint our house? How many times a, a year or every other year do we change our furniture? How much time do we spend on our clothes? How much time do we spend on all of the mundane things of the world? Where is our focus? And what is our focus on? We should understand that within us, we are made up of elements. Our mind is elemental. So there is a natural attraction from the elements to the elements. It's almost like a magnetic pull. And that's why you lose your concentration. If you look at the world, the world is going to pull you into it. If you look at the elemental scenes in our life, they are going to pull you into it. And once you get pulled into it, it becomes very difficult to pull yourself out of it. So we have to make a constant effort as we're being pulled into the world to pull ourselves out of the world. And this is one of the reasons for spaced repetition of prayer. Prayer, if done correctly, pulls you out of the world. If not done correctly, it's just a bunch of exercises while you're thinking about the world in your normative way. If you can't stop the concentration on the world while you're praying, what is the use of prayer? What is the use of the repetition that you go through in prayer until you find yourself at peace in those moments? And at peace, one of the meanings is that without attachment to the world, without attachment to all of the things that you hold dear in the world, where you've given up your relationship to the world for a period of time. There was once an Arab who was praying with the prophet and the prophet was done early and he was standing at the door uh, way to the uh, mosque. And as the Arab walked by, he said, you did your prayer wrong, go do it again. And he did it again and came by and saw the prophet standing there. And the prophet said to him, you've done your prayer wrong, do it again. And he went and did it again. And then he came by a third time and he told him to go back and do it again. And the prophet, and then the Arab said to the prophet, what did I do wrong? He said, when you're standing, you have to stand until your attention is truly focused on God and you find peace in that place and you find a release from the world. When you go down to the middle position, you have to stay there until you've found peace and you found release from the world. And when you bow your head to the ground, you have to stay there until you found peace and you found release from the world. If you haven't accomplished that, you haven't prayed correctly. So the act of prayer is in and of itself not a release. If your mind 
and the rest of your being while you are praying is thinking about the tie that you didn't buy yesterday or the car that you saw that you wanted or whatever worldly shadow attachment you are spending your time with at that moment. So if we are spending our time with attachments to the shadows, then we're not truly praying. But prayer has to occur. Our relationship with our Lord has to exist. And we need to carry on a conversation with our Lord. And how do we carry on this conversation? How do we come to the place where we can know our Lord? And Bawa tells us that as long as we carry all the manure within us that's attached to the world, we can't get into that clear place where we can truly converse with the Lord. Now, there are levels of conversing with the Lord. On one level, we're still attached. And we ask the Lord to help us with our attachment. We ask the world, we ask the Lord and explain to him in detail every one of the things that is hindering us from moving forward into that open space where he exists, into that world without form, into that world of truth, into that world of light. And that conversation moves on to higher and higher and higher and transcendent levels where the conversation is love, loving love, compassion, being intermingled with compassion, mercy being intermingled with mercy, where the world is left behind. We are capable of all of these things. We have to believe in our capability. We have to believe that this is the truth of our way. We have to believe that this is what we're supposed to do. And at the end of all of our journeys is wisdom. And wisdom is in fact God. And if we can't find wisdom, we can't find God. And if we do find wisdom, we become God-like. And it is when we become like unto him that we can truly converse with him, because then we are both in the same place. We are in the shadowless place, even though we are a body. We are in the shadowless place, even though we are elemental. We are in the shadowless place, even though we have a shadow, because our soul is what's doing the communicating now, and our soul is without a shadow. So within this body, within this elemental form that is that casts a shadow, we have placed within us a ray of God that is shadowless. And we can come to know that place if we can walk through our life concentrating on God, concentrating on that which is formless, releasing ourselves from that which has form. A uh, student came to his teacher and he said, what have you gained 
from your meditation. And the teacher said nothing. Then he said, well, what's the use of it? He said, well, I've lost my anger. I've lost my desire. I've lost my depression. I've lost my fear of death. I've lost my jealousy, etc., etc., etc. So our meditation should be taking things out of us. It should be emptying things from us. You see, within you is already the ray of God. We are suppressing that through all that we gather in the world, all that we obtain in the world, all that we carry in the world, all that we hold sacred in the world, all of our idols, everything that we hold sacred that is other than God is an idol. Everything that we hold dear other than God is an idol. There are lots of stories that explain this, sometimes in very, very harsh terms. Uh, there's a story of a saint who lost his son, and he thanked God for taking him because he had such a great attachment to him, and now he could be closer to his Lord. Now, that seems harsh, but for a saint, that's an understood story. The governor of Konya came to visit a sheikh in Konya, and he gave his card to his attendant to bring to him to introduce him. And the card said, Abdul Rahman, governor of Konya. And he brought it to the sheikh, and the sheikh says, I have no time for this guy. Go give him his card back. So he brought him his card back, and uh, Abdul Rahman looked at the card and said, oh, my fault. And he crossed out governor of Konya and gave him the card back to bring to him. And now he brought him the card that said Abdul Rahman, and the sheikh said, Oh, I know this guy. I'm happy to see him. The, the true sheikhs, the ones of wisdom, have no time for the titles of this world. They don't mean anything to them. They're just shadows that people carry, and they've given up the shadows. But as men, we are attached to these shadows. We give these shadows great importance. We hold them up high. We hold them in places of reverence. People love titles. People love wealth. People love honor. People love fame. People love to be recognized. Our love has to shift to God, and we have to become small. Becoming small means giving up our love of titles, giving up our love of fame, giving up our love of wealth, giving up all of the love that we have for all of the elemental things that we move through in this world. We have spent so much time moving through the elemental things of these world that they've all attached themselves to us. And we need to scrub to detach them from us. They've all hooked themselves into us. We need to pull these hooks out. And that includes belief systems. That includes religion. That includes anything that separates you from God. There needs to be a direct connection. And that direct connection only can occur when everything else is gone. So we need to concentrate on removing everything 
else. We need to concentrate on getting everything else out of ourselves so that we become pure. Understand that each attachment that you have towards the world, that we have towards the world, brings about impurity towards us. When we want fresh water, we have to dig. And you have to separate the earth until you get to water. And sometimes the first water is brackish, or the first water is brown, or the first water is salt. And you have to keep digging and digging and digging until you get to fresh water. We need to find that fresh water. And that fresh water comes from an eternal spring. And what is that fresh water? That fresh water is wisdom. And we need to create a spring of wisdom within ourselves. And when wisdom is grown within us, then all of a sudden, we can see the things of the world for what they are worth. But without wisdom, the glitters and the glamours and the torpors and the idols of the world seem to have meaning. They seem to have importance. They seem to be things that we want. They seem to be things that we desire. We need to understand the nature of desire. See and want. Imagine and want. Dream and want. So that part of us that is magnetized towards the world and towards the elements and towards the things that are elemental, we have to release ourselves from what that is that creates that need. We have to understand that the true treasure is the treasure that Allah has for us. And this treasure is greater than any treasure that the elemental world can offer us. And until we understand that, we are going to accept and we are going to look for and we are going to strive for and we are going to intend to acquire all of these elemental things. So, do we understand the nature of desire? Do we understand how it works? Do we understand that as long as it runs within us and controls us, wisdom is going to be far from us? Do we understand that as long as we are in the world of memories, where we just bring up all that we've been through, all that we've seen, all that we've thought about, as long as that's attached to what's elemental, the world of wisdom is far from us. Do we realize that as long as we walk through this world and participate in all of these worldly things, all of the things that bring about worldly success, and as long as we're attached to all of these things, the world of wisdom is far from us. And if the world of wisdom is far from us, then the world of God is far from us. Think about shadows and think about shadowlessness. There is a shadowlessness world. There is the kingdom that is without shadows. And this is God's kingdom. It is without Satan. It is without evil. It is without anything that is haram. It is full of the qualities that belong to our Lord. It is full of patience. It is full of <clears throat> kindness and love and mercy and compassion. It is full of truth 
It is full of justice. There are no enemies in this world. We have to imagine that place. And we have to walk with that within us. So we need to learn to walk with our Lord. That everywhere we go, he is with us. And that our consciousness is focused on that. And as we do that regularly, the garbage that's within us will dissipate. It will leave us because we have no need for it anymore. As long as we need the world, the world will be there for us to carry. The world will jump on our backs and say, take me here, take me there, take me everywhere. It's only when we give up the need, we give up the desire, we give up the memories, we give up the dreams, we give up the visions and the acts within the world. This seems impossible, but this is the path that's been laid out before us. And we've seen somebody who did it. We read about men who've done it all the time, and it is available for each and every one of us. And we have to build up strength to believe that it's available for each and every one of us. And we have to develop a conversation with our Lord, wherein we ask to be rid of all that is not real and allow us to enter into reality, allow us to be accepted into reality, allow us to be accepted into the truth, allow us to be accepted in that place for those who have transcended for those who exist in that transcendent place. That place is our true birthright. And that is the place that we have to intend to go. And Allah's intention is that we go there. The Prophet's intention was that we go there. The Qutub's intentions are that we go there. Which means the world is set up with an intention for us to go there. Believe that that's our home, and go there. And may Allah accept each and every one of us there. Amin, amin. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.